and I am the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and I am super excited to share with you part two of my craft room closet makeover. So in part one, you saw how I emptied out my previous closet, put up the wallpaper and put in all these shelves. And I promised to show you part two, which would be a more in-depth tour and answer some of the questions that you guys had for me in part one. All right, let's go. Okay, here is a more in-depth tour of my craft room closet. You can see there are a few additions, including some different labels. And I wanted to show you what I am keeping where and kind of give you the reasoning behind it. So this is the overview. If you miss the craft room closet makeover, then I will link that video. Make sure you check that out. Otherwise, let's start looking. Okay, to start with, my husband cut these shelves custom so that they would fit perfectly in the closet and increase my storage. So on the top shelf are old scrapbooks, in this, my grandmother's sewing machine, my Girl Scout bag, and then some other storage bags that I've used sparingly so I don't really need to get to them very much. On the second shelf, here's where I keep my PTA binders and church binders. I have my Cricut Easy Press 2. This is a trash can that I pull down and it has been really handy. So I can pull it down. I use it on this desktop right here, or it actually hangs really nicely right on my cart that sits right down here. So if I'm working and I need the desk space, but I do want a trash can over here, this happens to work super well. But when I'm not using it, I do like to keep it up and out of the way. Over here, this is all Arteza art supplies. And these are my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers that I do not use very often. And when I'm using Arteza, I do like to pull this bin down, but it's just easier for me to keep them all together. You might be wondering what this is. And this is a camera holder. I use it to hold my phone so that I can film over here. I am in the process of making this area more filmable. I love the big workspace. I love being able to stand and work. So this has been working great for holding my phone. I am just working on getting some brighter lights that will light up this area even more so than it already is. All right, in the first makeover video, you saw that we installed these white shelves for holding my cutting machines. I have a Cricut Explore Air 2, and then I also have a Silhouette Cameo. And it works out really nicely to be able to bring them down onto the desktop. I purchased this tower that has a lot of different electrical outlets plus USB outlets. And I have both machines plugged in permanently. And then when I pull it down to work, all I need to do is pull out the cord. I plug it in, it cuts. And then when I'm done, I simply hang the cord back up. It has been super convenient so far. And I like having the extra workspace. And when I'm cutting, this gives me a ton of space to cut to weed my projects, to sort through the pieces. It's been fantastic. I purchased these gold shelves from Michaels on clearance and I have one under each of my cutting machines and I love them because they do give me more storage but they don't block the beautiful wallpaper that I work so hard to put up. So over here I have my Cricut pens and then my infusible ink uh, pens all stored ready to use with my machine. And then also at Michael's, I picked this up and I love this. So this is a rotating tower that is also a pegboard. And the original plan was honestly to put a pegboard right here in the middle, possibly an Ikea pegboard, but I ended up not wanting to cover up that much of the wallpaper. This works fantastic because I have all of my Cricut tools ready to go. In here, I can store extra tools extra things I might need for my machines. And it just works really well to have it all at hand. I did change out the knob on the top. It came with just a white plastic small cube knob and I wanted to give it just a little bit more personality. So I put that on there and it really allows me to get to my tools very easily. 
For now, this shelf is just decorative holding these sweet succulents, but as my collections grow or as I find a need for having some more storage over here, I will have this shelf available, which I think is a really good plan. It's nice to have some decorative elements mixed into your craft room so that it's not all craft supplies all the time. My Cricut Explore Air 2 sure did get a big workout as I worked on labels for all of these bins down here. I love having things labeled because it really makes it easy to find what you're looking for. And I find that cleanup goes even faster, which is something that is really important to me to try to keep my space organized. Let me give you a more in-depth tour. So I've just started working with a lot more vinyl and I find that I have a lot of scraps. Vinyl isn't the cheapest thing ever, so I wanna save the pieces I have. So I have this bin ready to hold my vinyl scraps. I can just toss them into there as that collection grows. I may wanna end up sorting it a bit more um, when it's in there, but I have it there for now. I work with a lot of digital sets and so I bought this big piece from Ikea. You can see it has um, one set from Illustrated Faith right in there, a set that's upcoming over there. And I like that I can just cut them out using my cutting machines and then I can sort them straight into here. And when I'm ready to work, I can either work at this desk or I can bring this one right over to my regular desk to work. So it's pretty easy to move around in that fashion. And then over here, I actually had space and I actually have several spaces that are empty. So I just labeled this one project bin. It's ready to go for when I have a new crafty project and I wanna keep all of the pieces together. Love having the um, storage ready to go so that I'm not at a loss when I'm starting. Speaking of extra storage, I did increase my overall storage with these two towers. And really it was a matter of storing things more efficiently in these project bins. So I actually have one, two, three completely empty project bins, which will be great as I am working and trying some new different things. I'll already have a place to store them. And then I have two slots, one and two that are also open and available for more craft supplies. Okay, we'll start from the bottom up. These white bins, I have one on each side. This one is just some random extra office supplies, pegboard accessories, hole punch, things like that, that I do not get to very often. And then on the other side is where I have my laminator, the laminating sheets, and then my happy planner punch that I need a little bit more often. Right above here, I have my Cricut accessories. So I have my Cricut mats and then my Easy Press mat fits in nicely over here. And on this side, I have my score board, my scoring board, which fits perfectly right in there. As we work our way up, I have just some different tools. These are some cutting tools that I've had for a while. There's some really nice creative memory tools. I don't use them all that often, but I don't wanna get rid of them because they do come in handy sometimes. Here is the Craft Smart acrylic paint. This is just the real basic acrylic paint that I've um, used forever. So some random colors that I don't have in my other stash. Here are some Illustrated Faith kits. Now I have several Illustrated Faith kits from the past that I never got to. I'm still holding on to the kits in hopes that I will find a little bit of extra time, but eventually I'll probably have to de-stash these and pass these on to some new Bible journalers. And then I do have a bin for some overflow of By the Well for God and then Creative Retreat kit um, pieces are in here. And again, I end up using those kits pretty much all the way up or that ephemera and leftover pieces get sorted into my regular stash. So this one isn't super full. Over on this side, you guys have heard me say that I'm kind of a project life dropout. So I have a lot of old cards. So this bin has old project life cards. It has some scrap paper in it, some tags, just some odds and ends pieces that didn't fit in with the rest of my stash. As of right now, I just have one Cricut accessory box, but I can see this growing, especially as I start to experiment with infusible ink which is mostly what's in here, some different infusible ink products. 
And then I like to keep my Felicity Jane pieces separate from the rest of my stash. Let me show you how this one works. Okay, in my Felicity Jane box, I have a bunch of Felicity Jane alphas. I love their alphas, love pulling this out. I have a lot of their little bits and pieces, some chipboard pieces, buttons, just kind of mixed all together from different collections. Here are some enamel stickers and other 3D pieces, some of their tags and extra stickers. And then in the back here are some Felicity Jane papers. When I used to do exclusively Traveler's Notebook, I would pre-cut all my Felicity Jane paper down to Traveler's Notebook sizes. Now I kind of change it up, but I still keep the Traveler's Notebook papers separate. So I love having them all together, all the Felicity Jane supplies, because I can just pull this over to my desk and pull out the papers that I want to work with. And I have all my Felicity Jane goodies right there with me. Last but not least is the cart that is stored between my two towers. And I don't pull it out very often, but it is full of all kinds of random goodies. So here is my label maker, and I keep that right next to all of my stamp storage goodies. So this has those Avery L stamp pockets, the paper backing that I use for a lot of my stamps. These are some smaller bags that I use for ephemera pieces. So whenever I'm sorting things into my stash, this is where I go to. To. On this rack, I have all my glues, my glue guns and my craft bond glue, all of that goodness. I have my napkins that I use and all kinds of art journaling. These are some random note cards and these are some cards I've printed from Damask Love. And then the back or the top at the moment is kind of just a catch all. So I have these extra storage pieces from Michael's that I've been using, um, a few extra paper pieces that I can't decide if I want to keep in my stash. And then this is my Jane Davenport splat mat um, stored right here so I can pull it up and put it on top of the butcher block if I'm going to work with anything messy. As you can probably tell, I am absolutely in love with my new craft closet. It has been just wonderful. I love having the extra works space and it was well worth all the effort to make it look beautiful and functional. Thank you so much for joining me on this craft room closet tour. I hope you really liked it. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite part was. If you check out the description for this video, I have links to a lot of the supplies that I used in my closet if you're interested in checking those out. I also have a link to my bi-weekly newsletter that goes out and talks about crafty tips and organization hacks. It's a lot of fun, so make sure you sign up for that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.